So recently we've had the chance to test out the Angicus Saber IP20X on some of our uh, Warhammer streams. And I gotta say, so far it's been pretty great. We've been using it to shoot um, a lot of our, our tabletop content and getting a lot of really cool uh, cinematic angles with it. We've been uh, absolutely loving this camera. Um, it's got incredible image quality for a camera of its price range, um, and it's incredibly flexible and can do you know pretty much whatever we need it to do. The 20x optical zoom is great. Uh, you know, sometimes we're we're wanting to get in there and get some really uh, nice close up. Uh, shots of you know our paintwork and and our builds and all of the the cool little miniatures we got going and this is fantastic for that we even get we even get pretty great results in low light settings because uh, the camera's got a lot of built-in kind of things to, to help with that with noise reduction and sharpening and color correction and also all, uh, all sorts of stuff like that uh, this thing's got a ton of different output options. It's got standard HDMI, SDI, um, it's got NDI, which is what we've been using a lot. Um, it's also got USB, which is pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, we've mostly been using it over uh, IP. We've been pulling it into vMix and uh, running it through that. We just had to set up a few settings on the back end using the web app, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And we've been pulling 1080p60 through that without any hitches at all. So if you're looking for uh, a nice flexible option for your setup, this is great. It's even got a standard quarter 20 uh, tripod uh, tap on the bottom. So it's easy to just slot it into your current setup. Uh, easy peasy. The movement of the camera is a lot smoother than most of the PTZs that I'm used to using. Most of them are kind of jerky, a little bit uh, robotic and static. Um, the Sabre has built-in movement acceleration, which uh, helps make the movements look a lot smoother, which has been really nice. Um, we've been using some other PTZs for other things, and I just that's always been uh, one of my biggest issues with them, so it's, it's nice to have something a little bit more natural feeling. There's a bunch of different ways to uh, control the PTZ stuff. Um, the standard uh, way that they, they've got it is with just the IR remote, which you just have to have line of sight pointed at the, the camera. It's got you know standard pan tilt zoom controls, um, but it's also got a bunch of other different options. Um, you can mirror the image, you can flip the image, um, you can control your focus, control your zoom turn on and off, autofocus, manual focus, um, everything. There's a lot of different options. Um, and obviously that's how you open up the on-screen menu and change all of your settings inside the camera that way. Changing the settings and using the web app was a little bit clunky. Um, we mostly just kind of used it to set up the IP settings uh, for the NDI and kind of used the on-screen stuff and other uh, third-party tools for image correction and stuff after that. For the actual PTZ remote control, um, we either did that through um, vMix, because vMix just has uh, built-in uh, remote control PTZ features, um, and we also had an app on our phone that's called, the, uh, called Pan Tilt Zoom, and that allowed you to uh, connect to the camera over IP uh, using uh, Sony Visca, which is just standard PTZ controller uh, communication protocols. Uh, but yeah, overall, this camera has been kind of exactly what we needed to, you know, le level up our, our wargaming streams to uh, the next level. Um, we've been able to get some great shots with it and put out some great content with it. And uh, we highly recommend anybody who uh, is in Europe or any of the other areas that uh, Angicus distributes to to check them out. We'll definitely we'll definitely be picking up another one of these should they become available in North America uh, in the near future. Anyways, let us know what you think in the comments. Tune into Slam Sector on Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, where we do live battle reports. And uh, we'll catch you next time.